Now in seven days, the country heads to the ballot. Kenyans will be casting multiple votes. It will be the third general election and the fourth for the presidential election after the promulgation of the 2010 constitution. Tonight we look at the race as it enters its final stretch. Good evening, I'm Abu Bakr Abdullahi. Welcome to the broadcast. As always, remember, you can be part of this discussion. Send us a message on 22047. The hashtag to use is Pandit's Night. Let me introduce our panel for the night. Uh, Philip Chebunet is a lecturer at the University of Eldoret. Uh, Dennis Ndumbi is a political analyst and a frequent commentator on politics. We had equally invited Julia Nyokabi Chege, who is a governance expert, uh, who will be joining us hopefully in the program. Gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Dennis, let me start with you. Seven days to the polls. Mm -hmm. How is it shaping up? Um, seven days to the poll, and indeed we thank God that this country has come this far uh, without any major interruptions on matters of security, even though the country is grappling with key issues that then uh, post uh, ninth, then uh, we pray uh, that the next government will be able to resolve those issues, and we know for sure mm -hmm that a mother carries a child in the womb for nine months. The last days define the safe delivery of the baby. And we know that upon the birthing of this baby, the name indeed will be Kenya Kwanzaa. And you're, and con you're confident the name of that baby will be Kenya Kwanzaa? I'm confident that the name of this bouncing child will be Kenya Kwanzaa. And why am I confident? As scientifically, looking at the key regions that uh, Raila traditionally had, he has lost those region to William Ruto. When you look at Western, when you look at parts of the coast region, when you look at Nairobi that we were saying indeed is a battleground, it's no longer a battleground. When we look at the entire Mount Kenya, the 10 counties of Mount Kenya indeed, all of them perhaps to the last month, uh, to the last man after William Ruto. So we are confident that this baby, the baby's name, we have christened this baby already as the majority of Kenyans to be the baby that is called Kenya. Dennis, Dennis, I'll still question you. You are confident that baby, in your own analogy, is Kenya Kwanzaa? Absolutely. Based on what? Given Based that the numbers on, uh, are indicative of a very tight race. Uh, no, no, no. There's no tight race. Um, uh, indeed, Raila Odinga has already retired from the race. Um, and uh, as a relay, uh, the president was trying to pass the baton to Raila Odinga, but he realized that Raila Odinga is not on the race anymore. And fortunately, in a relay, the one who is fast, the one who is well trained, the one who has the muscle, and the one who has the strongest breath, then will finish as a first person. And I'll, 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 that we have seen that even when you look at this, when you look at uh, Kenya in terms of uh, numerically mm -hmm. and regionally, scientifically, the win solidly plus 60% is for William Samoy Ruto, undoubtedly so. Again, the polls are indicative of a very tight race. We will come to what the polls are saying. It's okay. Uh, Philip, perhaps the same question. How is uh, the race seven days to the polls taking shape? I think right now the emotions are going high. Uh, people are discovering that the election cannot be postponed. And by what uh, IBC is promising, the election cannot be stolen. So I think uh, people are discovering that it cannot be changed. So right now what the candidates are doing, they are having their final rallies. Uh, in fact, they are solidifying their bases. Uh -huh. And uh, you will find that uh, there will be one or two propaganda uh, in the social media to show that uh, this side or the other side is, is winning. So what the candidates have to do is to reassure their basis. And if you can ensure that you have a base, you are going to win this election. And to be fair, we have seen the four presidential candidates, namely UDA's Deputy President William Ruto, Azimio's Raila Odinga, Roots Party's uh, Professor George Wajakoya, and Agano's uh, David Moure crisscross the country, intensifying uh, their vote hunt mission seven days to the polls. Are these consequential seven days, do they potentially be days that can change Opinion politically? I think uh, they, they say that you can break the boats at the doorsteps. So it's, very, it's good to be very careful and ensure that you finish this race 
on a high note. Uh, the, the only thing that we are finding is that uh, it's becoming a, a it's becoming a, a, a race, uh, a tools race. Uh, you, you have heard that people saying we have uh, dangis and we have horses. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Wajakoy and Maure, I think uh, they survived among the 50 that who are chopped off uh, so that uh, four people remain. I think uh, we would have had a competitive race had they been very strong. But I think uh, they have tried. What, what is there is uh, we need to analyze and check whether uh, Raila still has uh, the, the former basis uh -huh. that, that he had. And I think uh, according to what Dennis has said, I think uh, I, I'm worried if Ruto has really encroached the, the basis that formerly belonged to uh, Raila Odinga, then I think uh, William Ruto uh, will, 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 will win the race. Uh, Dennis, let me come back to you and still on the confidence of Kenya mm. Kwanzaa baby come the 9th of August. Yes. Poll after poll, Infotrack and Ipsos place Raila above Ruto. Mm. Uh, latest media poll uh, today revealed Ruto is one point ahead of uh, Raila. Mm. Th that is suggestive of a very tight race, isn't it? It's not suggestive of the confidence you are naming that baby with. Essentially, um, those polls, uh, majority of them are fake polls. And I can confidently say that because they don't um, satisfy the scientific threshold. Historically, they have set a presidency that is based on the platform of lies. You have seen that um, one of the uh, one of the polling companies has sequentially traditionally placed Raila ahead of every contender in every election circle that is there mm -hmm. but then resoundingly so Raila has lost it means that some of these companies are commercial merchants who want to pay bills through uh, the financial acumen of Raila Odinga and therefore we can confidently say that they are fleecing Raila Odinga. And then they sit as liars within the gates of the city and they bring us trouble because what they do is that they had a basis to believe that one candidate is ahead of another. The true poll will be demonstrated democratically on the 9th of August and we're happy that the referee themselves being, uh, being IBC is judicious enough to deliver a vote. And it's not only IBC that delivers the vote. Mm -hmm. The vote, at least the reason why we say that it's not possible to steal the vote is because in one polling station, let me just demonstrate, you have four presidential chief agents uh, or agents. And then you have the agent for the governor. If there are 10 governors, then you have 10, 10 agents. And then if the senators, MCAs, MPs going all the way. So it means in one polling station, indeed, you can have a minimum of about 15 of them. Then you have observers. So it's not possible for the election to be stolen because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the safety nets that we have put to ensure that the integrity of this election uh -huh. is fulfilled and Kenyans are happy. And the reason why I'm saying that the William Ruto presidency is inevitable because a time has come in this country that this country must be freed from the shackles that have bound us from the day we attained independence and then the post-independent leaders mutilated our independence, our post-independence constitution uh -huh. 35 times to introduce an imperial presidency. And we are seeing that that is the something that they wanted to repeat in BBI. When BBI was defeated, William Ruto took this presidency the day BBA was defeated is the day we can accurately Dennis, see that vote was won. Dennis, to be fair, the elections will be held on the 9th of August, isn't it? I agree. St st still on the question of polls, Dennis. Yes. Uh, you term them as merchants, people who are fleecing one side of the political Fleece divide. Us. But these are research companies who say they did this research objectively to rate the candidates well, in percentages. When a dental research company comes to tell you you have five teeth, and you know that you have all teeth. You, and, and they have sold the research that they have done on you, on a dentist mm -hmm. at the end of the day, to gain expedience over you. You can call them out because you are the data. I am the sample set that they are sampling and saying that we are, you understand. So we live in this country. We have brothers and sisters in this country. 
The only candidate that has crisscrossed the country is William Ruto. Raila has crossed the country. All right. Well, uh, the rest have not even gone anywhere. What we are saying is that the inevitability of William Ruto's presidency is both scientific and it is based on moral evidence. Dennis, Nothing to do with much and shit at the end of the day. Dennis, and let me tell you something. Again, again, I will be with you here. Uh, God post wait. nine, uh, by the will of God, uh -huh. and you know God is a good father. Absolutely. At the end of the day, to, for, 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 for us to congratulate Kenyans on essentially the good uh, uh, philosophy they have in terms of voting. Again, the, again Dennis, these polls are done by companies that say they are scientific. Uh, Philip, just on the question of polls, should they be taken politically seriously? Uh, Each side seemingly is doubting those numbers. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have written an article that I think will be out tomorrow on why opinion polls mm -hmm. are just opinion polls. And in that article I've said that if you check the question that is normally asked in the opinion polls, it mm -hmm. says, if you are to vote today, who would you vote as president? So mm -hmm. it is today. And uh, it, it brings out the question, uh, if I can ask even if you are to eat today, it will be different from what you are to eat next week. Mm -hmm. And if I ask another question, if you are to marry today, <laughs> whom will you marry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it is going to change. In the next, if you stay for one year or two years, it is subject to change. So opinion polls are based on feelings. And it's based on what the, the, the author of the opinion polls wants to get at the end of the day. Philip, done research in the university. Philip, the most, done, the most yes. dominating question people yes. are often asked, and yes. I have had instances where uh, several have called me, I don't know where they get my number from, <laughs> is whom will you vote for the presidency as your president? If election was held today. That question is a very objective question, isn't it? Yes. It's not a question based on feelings. But I think, Abdullahi, the best, I want to tell Kenyans here, mm -hmm. candidly, mm -hmm. the best opinion poll is the one that you do at the polling booth on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you know, in the village where I come from, uh, if you tell people that uh, so-and-so is ahead by this percentage, they will think it is the government releasing a... Uh, <laughs> the result. Uh -huh. they, they even don't know that uh, it's a company. It, uh, where I come from, they, mm -hmm. they imagine that this, this is official. But I want to tell Kenyans, the best way to show that you love that candidate that you want is to vote, is to get out and vote on Tuesday. Otherwise, I, 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 I think the best thing we should do uh -huh is to dismiss the opinion polls, to be on the safe side. Because if you believe in them, you'll have a heartbreak. Philip, dismiss the opinion uh, polls uh, because uh, they are not reflective of your side of the political divide? Let, or dismiss them because of credibility let, let me tell you, for the sake of your health, uh -huh. <laughs> I think it's just good to be on the safe side to dismiss them, uh -huh. but ensure you go and vote for you to actualize that opinion poll. Because if you believe in them, I have seen uh, people collapsing. Uh, there, there are candidates who have not put any effort. They are depending on these opinion polls in town. You, you cannot release 10 opinion polls in one week. I, I think if, if it is science, then uh, that, that is wrong science. The, All right, uh, Dennis, there, go ahead. There, uh, there are uh, some of our colleagues um, who are candidates today, who some of these opinion polls have approached them um, for financial gain and expediency, for political expediency. And they have said, if you give me 300,000, then I can put your head in one poll or the other. And that's the reason why I insist that many of these polling companies are entities that hide in rabbit holes for four years and then show up within the political cycle to indeed, so that they, at least they can satisfy the debts that they've incurred in the four years, that they haven't been making any money. And the uh, truth to the fact is that we have seen, you know, you, you, you cannot have... Uh, seven polling uh, firms disagree on who is ahead. I mean, do they, some of them poll in Tanzania, others Botswana, yeah. others Migingo? I mean, in the same country, the disparities are so major. And then you can't have one opinion poll that in the last 15 election cycles, 
they only declare Raila as being ahead. Mm -hmm. And then the defeat is so resounding. So you're wondering what kind of science is this that they're using indeed? You understand? The science itself cannot qualify the threshold of, uh, of, of, of grade four uh, in CBC at the end of the day. The truth of the fact is that in this country, we look at uh, presidencies. Uh, this region voted for who? And this other region voted for who? Uh -huh. Scientifically, if you look at it, there's what we call the third party vote. The third party vote is we're in a coalition and the dominant party is X and the other parties. So it means the reason why we came together is because myself as the, the, the party X, I will deliver a vote basket. In 2017, the third party vote in Western province was delivered into NASA by Honorable Mudavadi and uh, Wetangula, Fort Kenya and ANC. And the voter turnout was 85%. I'm telling you this because it's factual, you can check. Today, that voter, voter basket is going to be delivered to Kenya Kwanzaa. When you go to the coast province, areas like uh, Kilifi County, Kilifi County today, uh, the governor and 95% uh, of the MPs are in Kenya Kwanzaa. In 2017, they delivered that voter basket into Kenya Kwanzaa. When you go to the other uh, vote basket that was delivered in the coast province, was in Kuala. Uh -huh. The governor is in Kenya Kwanzaa at the end of the day. When you look at Mombasa, Mombasa now, Hassan Omar, has uh, received uh, what it is that we call uh, a testosterone injection from Sonko. At the end of the day, Kamba are the second largest vote in Mombasa. When you come to Nairobi, the governor that is taking it by seven in the morning is, uh, is Sakaja. <coughs> when you go to the entire 10 counties of Mount Kenya, 95% will vote for William Ruto at the end of the day. So I want to ask you Dennis, at the end of the day, there's a Dennis, poll, by the way, funny enough that has come today, if you like to believe it, uh -huh. I don't know, but it's showing that the women rep who is uh, leading in Kisumu is the IUDA women rep. You understand at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, what I'm saying, uh -huh. what I'm telling you is scientific based on a precedence of what we had last year in the last ele electro circle. I am not second guessing or enough. doing a poll fair, of 2000. Fair enough, but Dennis, that is a, a huge assumption to make, isn't it? It's not you, an you say, assumption. You say 95% of central yes. vote for Kenya. Kwanda. 100%. This is a region that numbers currently are indicative, if they are to go by, of 30%. No, I, I come now. from Mount Kenya. I have gone through that region from one area to another. Uh, and I can tell you, I have not seen any photo of Raila, including on Thikaron. They have removed Raila's face on Thikaron and they have put Mother Karoa. The president fails to deliver that vote and they thought that Mother Karoa, somebody who has never filled Wanguru Stadium at the end of the day, somebody who comes from my village, we are neighbors, I can walk to a house. The only development that she has done is a tarmac road to a house can deliver a vote that a sitting president can, can, can do. Indeed, uh -huh. that is an assumption that reality versus magic, that Mother Karua will deliver that vote via magic. What I'm telling you is a reality, a probability that is real. I'm not a polling company All right. that uh, will second guess. And, and you, have you, know. to, you have a right to yeah. make your own predictions. It's Dennis. not predictions. That, they are uh, predictions versus facts. I have no, mentioned no, to you, fair enough. including politicians okay. that have delivered Raila's basket and today they are not there. So Raila has lost his traditional stronghold and the only stronghold, quote unquote, vis a vis, is perhaps Luo Nyanza, which has the most independent candidates. Fair enough. Uh, Philip, uh, Dennis talks of 95% particularly in central Kenya. This is a region that has been fashioned as though Raila Odinga is climbing the mountain, getting an increase in the number of percentages. I, I think uh, what I want to say tonight is I want to challenge that central to come out and actualize that 95%. Because I think it's just on paper. We would like to see people coming out to vote. Whichever region uh, that may have percentages here, uh, I think uh, these regions, if mm -hmm. they want to show that they love this candidate, even uh, the people where I come from, in, uh, in Washington, in Nandi and all those places, if they really want to show that they love William Ruto, they should not love William Ruto on paper. If, even those other regions that, uh, that love Raila Odinga, we want all Kenyans to come out. Mm -hmm. 
to come and vote. Because if you depend on opinion polls, uh, I've told you, Abdullahi, you should put some ambulance uh, uh, somewhere <laughs> closer to your home hmm. because you are going to collapse. Because you will start now claiming, in fact, these pollsters are the source of conflict. And I'm surprised they did not appear in the ICC witnesses uh -huh. because <laughs> they have been placing some candidates mm. to be ahead of the others and they collapse on the 14th day. So I think uh, pollsters must be serious. And, and you saw in the debates that these debates and even the pollsters are not taken seriously. Because you, you find uh, at, at, at five o'clock it is Maori appearing. Then it's only William Ruto in the evening. Then the others, uh, I, I think there should be a law that if you don't appear in the, in the debates, you should, be, you should be interrogated. You should be, you are breaking the law. Right. Or if the pollsters make fake uh, predictions, I think uh, they, they should be caught up with the law. You're watching Pundits Night. We are making sense of the state of uh, the race. Talk to us and as a message on 22047, the hashtag to use is Pundits Night. Time for us to take our first short commercial break. This discussion will be back after this break. Stay with us. stories. Despite being visually impaired, he is a jack of all trades. It is our quest to find answers on how to take care of children with special needs and those with disability. You do not need to see musical notes to understand music, but rather to have your soul feel the vibe. Actually, for us to make a wheelchair, we have to take measurements of the user. After doing my assessment, I get to know the parent, I get to know the, the heaviness she's carrying. Disability. Endless benefits. Slaty. Purely Kenyan. Buy now on Jumia or Amazon. Welcome to The Grind. My name is Violet Njoki. At first, it's always a tedious process at the beginning. Do you know what it takes to even stay at a place in a business for that long? No. So that triggered me and I woke up and I was back under my feet and I got new energy. Yes. Every Monday at 7.30 p.m. You're watching TV 47, the home of untold stories.
Welcome back to Pundit's Night. Thank you for staying with Kenya's fastest growing television. Let's get back to our discussion. We are making sense of the state of the race. Seven days to Kenya's consequential 9th of August polls. As earlier promised, Julia is with us in studio. Julia Chege is a governance expert and a Kangema parliamentary uh, candidate. Uh, just a reminder that we have Dennis Nthumbi, political analyst and commentator, equally as uh, Philip uh, Chebunet, who is a lecturer at the University of Eldoret. Uh, Julia, while you are away and before the break, we were talking of the numbers mm -hmm. in as far as the percentages and uh, predictions are concerned. Mm. Dennis made a very bold statement of 95% mm. of central Kenya in favor of Kenya Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. You come from that region. Yes. You understand the mathematics of that region exactly, equally. Exactly. 95%? Realistic, as Dennis says. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good evening, viewers. My name is Julia Che from Kagima Constituency and a governance expert, uh, lecturer at the University of Nairobi. Um, uh, first of all, is to, uh, I want to comment on the 95% because that is a pure lie from my brother because uh, uh, the game changer uh, was Mother Karua, who is happening to be the deputy president of one of the competitors, that is uh, His Excellency Laira Amoro Odinga. And uh, we all know the, the game changer, uh, whoever was going to be picked by the running mate, by His Excellency, de the deputy president, and the late honorable Laira Odinga, that's when the game finished. And uh, they know, and that is the plain truth, and we know. And I can tell you I'm from Mount Kenya. The time we were organizing for this uh, show, I was in a place called Tudu, mm -hmm. the farthest of Kagema constituency, very cold and very muddy at the moment. You know, impossible, but somehow I'm here. Uh -huh. And I want to confess and tell you, uh, the Mount Kenya, it is Azimio. It is Azimio. And nobody, last year in November and December, it was looking like uh, it is routinated. But currently, the game has changed. And, and Julia, you say the game has changed. Yes. You cite Martha Karua's entry to Azimio yes. as the turning point. It was a turning Just point. Just looking at the numbers, Martha Karua did mm -hmm. vie for the presidency. Mm -hmm. And she got mm -hmm. slightly more than 40,000 yes, the yes. last time she did yes, uh, yes. vie. Mm -hmm. Where does the confidence of her tilt in the race come uh, from? You, you see, you cannot judge somebody by the past. And uh, we all know that. Mother Karua has stood the test of time. She has no corruption issues. I'm not saying the other side they have a, cor a case of corruption. She is a woman who has tested the, uh, the test of time. And there are very many other people who are going to be uh, learning mate for the, His Excellency, the Deputy President, including uh, Honorable Alice Wahome. But that did uh, come to fruition. The person they picked is uh, uh, the Eliga de Gashagua. And we are saying Mother Karu has a track record mm -hmm. of fighting for this country. And that is where we are as a country. And is Mount Kenya and buying the idea that Mother Karu Yes, Mata Mount Karua Kenya has bought the Kenya. whole... I, I, I was actually with Mother over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And we transpired uh, uh, to traverse Moranga County with a chopper. And I can tell you, then we went to Suswa. I can tell you things have changed. When uh, and I'm a candidate in Kagema constituency, Mm -hmm. vying at the Democratic Party of Kenya. Democratic Party of Kenya, it is purported to be in Kenya Kwanzaa. But it's okay, I have no problem. But I don't subscribe to that. I'm actually in Azimio. I'm more Azimio than anybody else. You know, so what your I'm party, saying... Your party leader is in Kenya Kwanzaa. Uh, my party leader is in Kenya Kwanzaa. It is de his democratic right. We didn't agree as a, as a people. But what I am saying is that Mount Kenya has shifted. There is a total shift. I used to talk to people about uh, Kenya Kwanzaa, mm -hmm. and no, people were very excited. Today, you talk to them about Kenya Kwanzaa, they're like, okay. But things have changed since the entrance of Mother Karua. And you know, Mother Karua would have also been in Kenya Kwanzaa anyway. Mm -hmm. If she ended up there, I'm telling you what we are discussing today. Abu, I'm telling you, it will be a different ball game. But even Laira, let me finish this. Eh? Mm -hmm. Laira, he was actually down in terms of uh, the person to pick. But the moment he picked mother, uh, things changed. It, it's like located and all that. And that's where we are as a country. And Julia, I'm giving you more time observably because you came in now. We had uh, the Sorry. first uh, <laughs> section of the show. Uh, mm. Apology accepted, mm. given that you are in the field politically. Yes, yes. Uh, Raila Odinga says he's climbing the mountain. Yes. Analysts often point to him winning grounds mm -hmm. in the Mount Kenya region. Mm -hmm. This is a presidential candidate who in previous elections was painted in a very bad language that we can't even use on air tonight. Yes, what yes, has exactly, changed? Exactly. You know, 
know uh, our politics in our in, in Kenya has not uh, we have not matured in uh, democratically and people use uh, bad language to bad mouth others and put insults and I will, I, I will use a very good example what Laira used to be called Kimodo you know and you know it is a perception and that perception can actually be clean because it is somebody who came up with it mm -hmm. so today because he has the support of everybody and the country is going through a very 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 serious crisis economically and they seem to be talking about the economic uh, recovery that they want to bring and we are looking at them and we are saying if you look at mother and Lyra, and then you look at ruto and gashagua if i was given the two if Le Ruto becomes the president, I'll be the first person to clap for him and actually celebrate him. But for now, I am in Azimio and I'm celebrating and actually uh, supporting Laira Moro Odinga uh -huh. and Mother Karua. All right. Uh, uh, Dennis, Julia points to Martha Karua's entry into Azimio as the turning point. Mm -hmm. Many analysts have painted such a similar picture that Karua's influence in Mount Kenya region and her fashioning as someone who fought for the second liberation could win hearts and souls of Mount Kenya. You surely don't believe that, do you? Uh, it's a fallacious belief. Is it? In fact, it is folly to believe that somebody is delivering something when they're not. Um, it is a hopeless venture that Azimio is pursuing. And uh, the aspirations of the Mount Kenya, the 10 counties, are locked into Kenya Kwanzaa. And uh, uh, the mountain, indeed, which we call Mlima, the 10 counties, is ring-fenced for William Ruto and Rigadi Gashagua. Why are we saying that is because, for the longest, William has been a son of the mountain. We adopted him. And the president himself was so elected that by his own aspersion, without anyone pressing him whatsoever, he said, give this man 10 years. Kibaki himself introduced Ruto. And he said, this is an excellent man. So for a long time, we have indeed been in love with Ruto. And he has visited us more than any other person, just like the way somebody goes home. Mother Karua comes from, uh, she's my neighbor. If I scream, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, help will come from my house. Um, but there's no history of her being a mobilizer. Uh, she vied for presidency and uh, she was defeated by Dida. Uh, you know, that's how bad it is. She attempted governorship. She was, uh, she was defeated by uh, Waigoro, mm -hmm. who was a novice. You know, uh, that was her first attempt at the end of the day. Not just that, she has no reputation of even filling Wanguru Stadium. So she wouldn't even deliver a tent full into Azimio. There is this lie that uh, she has a good record. A good record doing where, when. You understand? We have to be truthful. When did Mother Karua fight for this country? We are rather confused. Because remember, she was in the banana wing. You understand? She indeed delayed the Constitution 2010 for 10 years. Let us be truthful today. That's, that is not just enough. Mother Karua defended the Atur Mangarian brothers and Sangasian when the media was being attacked by them. Not just that. She then was the one who did not want the golden bug scandal addressed. When Kibaki took government, Kibaki's biggest delivery to government, he said, was to bring ethics into government and build the capacity for the government to deal with corruption. So what did he do? He said, the person that I trust to deliver that is one Gedongo, PS for ethics. And when you look at the traction, we are talking about all the way from uh, 2004, 2005, 2006. You will see, for example, on the 2nd of June 2006, Mother Karua, who was the Justice Minister then, joined Rafael Tuju, the Foreign Minister then, in rejecting Gedongo's dossier on Anglo leasing and described Gedongo as a letdown to the country for exposing the scandal to the world. So we are talking about not just somebody who doesn't have a record mm -hmm. on uh, fighting impunity, we are also talking about somebody who has been absent in the public service field for a whole 13 years. We are also talking about somebody whose record of being wealthy today, you've heard us saying we are crisscrossing with choppers, is that her wealth is made through 
what is what do we call it through what is that thing called you know inflation, inflation. Yeah. at the end of the day so she has but, no business acumen she just took money and dumped it and by virtue of inflation did that so what well, one of the things we are telling um, we are telling Azimio you can't lie to me about my sister i know my sister inside out and mother karua we are neighbors we know inside out so maybe you can sell her like that to other parts of the country. Uh -huh. But since you deployed her, because Dennis, you say... But Dennis, when she brags of a corruption-free CV politically, that's gifted. There is none. I've told you she was against uh, the fight on corruption on Gidongo. The reason why Gidongo uh, resigned in Kibaki government was because Mother Carol was the biggest impediment. Not just that. Uh, during the deputy president uh, debate, she said that she received millions from a donor who uh, it was tied to BAT mm -hmm. and many of those things, you understand. Yes, we understand it was an allegation, but there is no difference between you and the campaign. You cannot say there's something called the campaign and then there's yourself. So at the end of the day, Mother Karua is not clean. We can't even start talking about Raila Odinga because the truth that we start talking about Raila Odinga All right. is Raila Odinga has been the biggest impediment towards the accession of any Kikuyu in this country. And we are talking that for this, we are in 40 years today. And for 40 years, no. we know that there has been a systematic assault from him. The president himself in Sagana 3, Sagana 2, told us that the reason why I shook hands with Raila is because your shops and your river were being banned by him. So via specific admissions, we are talking about facts that you can Google and check, facts that media reported. So what we are telling Azimio is that, look, one of the things that you have mastered in is uh, propagating lies and mainstreaming them as a truth. We don't mind the fact that your campaign is funded by COVID billions and many of the things of the sort. And, and through the fact, alleged, alleged of yeah, course, again, yeah. but through the fact that alleged. your chairman is losing two billion a day, 720 billion a year, All right. and uh, your deed will give him a lifeline again. De a Dennis vote for Azimio uh -huh. is another third term for President Uru Kenyatta. Dennis, so we De are saying that point, there point is a, Dennis, let me, let me ask you this. Correct. Uh, you say Martha's uh, CV, which her political uh, team touts as a corruption free is questionable is not what even of, questionable fair, fair enough P point man correct what of uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa running mate mm -hmm. who last week was yes. asked by a court of law uh -huh. to return monies questionably received Excellent. as proceeds of crime thank you that by a court of law question. thank you that we've asked that question please go to court and follow the proceedings regarding Ashago was not allowed to produce evidence now, it's not a criminal case. This is, you know, there's an act that says if you can't define where this money is from, then the government takes it. And it's not. And so what the government does is to ask you to return it. Regarding Ashagwa was served, not allowed to defend the case in court. Please go and get for me the court proceedings. This is what we are saying, that the criminal justice system is being used for political expediency. Fair enough. When you want to be very clean, right. let me, can I tell you something? Uh -huh. If you want to know corruption-free politicians, they're in Kenya Kwanzaa, why? They will be investigated, they will be intimidated, they will do everything of the sort. The president today told us he will deliver the question on COVID, uh, COVID billionaires. It was his own family that was implicated. My, my colleague Julia here will not say anything about that. Dennis, not my, just my question has been what, specific. Without changing goalposts. And, and, I, have, and I have told the, you. Uh, what I have told without you. Without changing goalposts. Yes. This is a running met Correct. of your presidential candidate. Yes. Asked by a court of law yes. to return monies yes. illegally received. Yes. No. The money, there is no court that said illegally received. Please understand the law that speaks into this. It says that if you're not able to define where your money came from, mm -hmm. then the government has it. It's not a criminal. But why would a, a man who is not criminal why would, why would a man who was he made was well not allowed? Okay, can what? we? Can we? Can Dennis, let me tell you something. You know, Julia, you know no, the no, thing no, is this. No, you you got a lot of airtime. time. No, 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 Julia, but what Julia. we are seeing, uh -huh. what we are seeing, what we are seeing is simple. one side of the political divide has not been prosecuted on anything whatsoever. There's tons and tons of criminals hiding under Azimio. And they have not been questioned whatsoever by the law. On this other side, there's intimidation, there's corruption. Judges by their own admission said, don't bring for us cases that have no evidence or anything of the sort. The prosecution is within the public space. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that the law must be adduced 
equally upon all Kenyans. Fair enough, uh, Dennis. And I still find difficulty that a man who has had earned 200 million shillings, not two shillings to be fair, if you're 200 business, million shillings cannot, not, can, not, cannot explain the source of no, that No, if you're in business, no, if you, yeah. let me ask you something. Uh -huh. You start to prosecute me in this media house and I'm not present and you pass the judgment and you don't haven't given me time to defend myself. That is not justice. That, in fact, okay. you're trying to gain something for expediency. Right. And it is not a criminal case for your information. You understand? There is, there is no arrest warrant against uh, Gashagua. There was no sentence. True. At the end of the day, this is a purely civil matter. But what we are saying uh -huh. is that can we check on the bleed that Azimio is thriving on? Two billion shillings a day. Can we, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. check those choppers that they have bought? Brand new of them. 20 of them that are feeling. They are more than the people. When you go to Azimio meetings, by the way, they are speaking to the choppers, not even the people. All right. No. No. Yeah. Uh, Philip, let me give you a chance. Uh -huh. The question of seemingly who is more corrupt than the I other. Think and I think uh, the, the, the two are, are neighbors in Mount Kenya. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> I, I would really sympathize with the Azimio. If, if what Dennis is saying, uh, that mother has not delivered, will not deliver anything, it's really worrying. You see, in, you, you said in 2017, uh, was it 2013 when mother was a uh, president of the country? Yes. Yeah, he, he got 43,000 votes. In fact, the spoiled votes were more than what mother Karua got. The spoiled votes were 500,000. I think if, if, I'm, if, if I'm clear, right. you, uh -huh. you, you can check. Uh, I, I think uh, what we, we, we are looking at uh, right now is uh, what can the coalition deliver. If we go to personalities, I think uh, we are going to lose track. What we are seeing here, seven days to the election, as Mother Karua convinced the people of Mount Kenya or the people of Kenya that ha she has a track record the other day, mother was, uh, was against PBI. Mm -hmm. But when she was picked as the running mate, she forgot that she was against PBI. In fact, she was the, the lawyer. I, 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 I think uh, it's also on record that she, she said that Raila Odinga should go home with Mike Kipaki. So I, I, I don't know uh, what, what changed uh, with uh, Mother Karua. So uh -huh. uh, what, what we are seeing here is, is double speak. And I think uh, what the people of Mount Kenya uh -huh. should really see is which coalition has, uh, will come and improve their lives. And I think uh, I'm also worried in this country when cases are brought closer to the election, like this one of uh, Rikandi Kashabu. I think uh, what, what they should have done, if you want to bring any lies, like in, in fact, when you are vying, I, I, I vied in 2017, uh -huh. and you will find people coming up with lies. They will even say you are not married. They will even yeah. say you don't have land. They will even exactly. say you live, you, exactly. live, you live on top of trees. Uh -huh. I think mm -hmm. my sister here has received a lot of allegations. They will even say that uh, she has a sponsor. Mm -hmm. they, they will say so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 and I think uh, what should be, if you want to bring any lies, bring them before the election. Fair enough, uh, Philip. Yes. Uh, Julia, as you react to what Dennis had said, yes, yes. whether the DP will get 95% or not, mm -hmm. uh, out of question, yes. is it not a matter of fact? that the deputy president has made irritatingly impactful inroads in central Kenya. He, mm -hmm. in Dennis' own words, is a darling to that region, isn't he? Uh, uh, true. Uh, the deputy president infiltrated central Kenya and has been doing that. And you know he was alone. He was not politicking with anybody. He was all alone. And if the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya currently is an honest person, first of all, I know the law does not allow him to, to resign. But then he should have stepped out and stepped aside and we get somebody else. If we talk about patriarchy in this country, uh -huh. patriarchy is, a law, is something that has made somebody like Mother Karua to look like she is losing. But let me tell you, when she was actually vying, I saw her being decampaigned by the media. I saw it. They would say all manner of things. Fortunately, TV47 was not there. Mm -hmm. You see, at least I can defend you. Uh -huh. But what I can tell you, one, one of the things that women face 
is the, uh, the, 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 the patriarchy, the patriarchal society that we are living in. And everybody will view you as a woman. And that's why I keep saying, let us not look at women as women. Let's deal from the neck up. And we see what is in between the ears. And Mother Karua has what it takes. She has been a minister in this country. We never saw any corruption case. And if it is there, it should be brought to book. We, she has been a member of parliament for Gishogo. And she had no corruption issues. Mother Karua stands for the truth. And I can guarantee you, if I was given uh, uh, the other side of the, uh, the, the, the running mate, and I was given uh, Mother Karua, I would pick Mother Karua anytime. Then, common sense dictates the whole world. The season is women. And the season we are in is that when you pick a woman, in this country we are over 50%. And we should not be ignored. And therefore, I want to speak the pe to the people of Mount Kenya today. And I know mm -hmm. they are listening. I want to tell them the only person who is ours is Mother Karua. And even Kashagwe is ours. But if we are given the two, we are going to pick Mother Karua. And I want to tell you the truth. Mother Karua has been an advocate of this country. And therefore, she has very many cases that she has defended. Leave alone Akinagedongo issues and all that. If something is bad, it can never be painted good. All right. Even if you try to do it, uh, uh, whatever. And the sport votes that my brother spoke about, even this year, I can tell you, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I can tell you there will be spoiled votes. And some people, they'll even go say, if you don't want to vote for this person, uh, cancel all of them. And you know that would be a sport vote. J Julia, it's a question of civic education in this country. Fair enough. Yes. Julia, let me ask you this. Yes. We're talking of Martha Karua, who did vie for the presidency in 2013 mm -hmm. and uh, the gubernatorial uh, position for Kirinyaga County in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, you paint a picture of a Martha Karua that is tilting the ground in favor of Azimio. Yes. Given that this is politics, and you know better than me, numbers matter, what has changed? Uh, one thing, uh, where we are in our country, we are at a point whereby we are looking at economic recovery of this country. Mm -hmm. We were hit by COVID-19, and it was all over the world. It was not a Kenyan thing. Mm -hmm. It was not a, a, an issue of HE, the president, uh, uh, the president of this country, that is Uhuru Kenyatta. And it has not been brought neither by his uh, deputy. And what we are talking about, right now, if you are given the two, and the, uh, by the way, they are, they are not two horseless uh, issue here. Uh -huh. We have two other candidates. Absolutely. So we don't want to concentrate on one candidate who has been there, who has been defiant, who has not obeyed the boss, and, you know, has been doing all manner of things. And, you know, if you look at uh, Mother Karua and when he was vying for presidency, I told you one of the main issues, he was decampaigned by the media. Mm -hmm. She was actually decampaigned. Number two, the patriarchal society that we are living in in this country also put her at a disadvantage. Mother Karua has nothing that she has stolen in this country. Mm -hmm. If you have something, let me know. The other thing, if you look at Mother Karua, the kind of a person she is, if something is bad, she will say it. You cannot massage or marinate, if I, if I may call it, Mother Karua. And that is the person we want in Mount Kenya. That is the person we are trusting. And she has convinced the mountain that she is capable and she is able. The question of going with Chopper is neither here nor there. These people, they own personal jets. Uh, uh, Mother uh, Karua doesn't have that. All right. We uh, want our Jiko, uh, 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 we want Wajiko for Wajiko. Dennis, Julia, Julia talks of someone who has been disobeying the boss. In reference, I suppose, yes. to Deputy yes. President William. Yes, Bush. yes, Why exactly. vote for such a person? Exactly. Uh -huh. Mother Karua walked out on Moy, disobedient. Uh -huh. You know why Mother she Karua, walked out? That allow, one I allow can me defend. To, allow, allow me to speak. I'll, I'll, I'll give yes. you a Mother Karua walked out on Kibaki when uh, Kibaki needed her the most. Mother Karua's attitude can chase away the wind. We need to close the Mother Karua discussion. No, we can't There's close it. who has... And, and we know it uh, sincerely. So when we talk about disobedience, her character, the president that she has, the history, she's like the walkout queen. You understand? And, and, and there's no greater disobedience than abandoning your boss in the time of need. William Ruto has stuck with His Excellency uh, Uhuru Kenyatta for the longest. You insult me, I'm there. You malign me, I'm there. You sabotage me, I'm there. William Ruto 
is indeed the magna carta of a marriage that lasts because nothing will ever separate us other than death. Now, De Dennis, you say you is, say the deputy president has been with the president. The deputy president. When, when for instance, when for instance in public, the DP is on record saying, "Mimi ndiye nilifanya campaign kubwa nilikuwa na amka asubuhi nikifanya mkutano tatu kabla ya rais kuamka na sababu mimi naifikia yake." But it is the truth. So you want us to lie? No, but we when, know, when, when he know. suggests as though the president was lazy to campaign, that, that's not a friend who was standing with him, is it? Sometimes you're raised in an environment that requires you to relax a bit longer. Other people are raised in an environment where they wake up at six in the morning to go to the shamba. You understand? Our raising is different. William Ruto's background required him to be the first bird that takes the worm. It is his disposition. Today, Nobody has campaigned greater. In all the 47 counties, William Ruto has been in each county thrice. You understand? Yeah. Azimio mm. has only been perhaps in 10% of the country. At the, you know, you can look at the traction that is here. But this is what I want to say. Uh -huh. Let us move away from the personalities. Because that you actually brought it, so we have to finish. No, no, no. Go, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. But let me tell you yes. something. Kenya Kwanza is not focused about Mama Moja. We are not focused about personalities. In fact, our idea is to depersonalize politics. Kenya Kwanza today is the only coalition that 10 women governors are vying and they will get the governorship. In this country for the first time, among us the 47 counties, we are going to have major counties headed by women. That is not just it. Kenya Kwanza is the only coalition that is going to have half of the cabinet run by women. Mm -hmm. It means 10 of those ministries will be gender sensitive and they will achieve the necessary parity because gender parity is not necessarily, you know, there's, there's, there's that leaning uh -huh. in terms of the elected. But from an appointive perspective, Kenya Consent, and we welcome you. If you don't make it in Kangema, we welcome you to, <laughs> yeah. to join us. But the we truth are making is that, it big. <laughs> no, the truth <laughs> is this. And also, when you look at our economic proposition, we are not just saying Mama Moja, we are saying Mama Water. What we want to do, there's a hustler fund, 50 billion shillings. Half of that is for women. 25 billion a year, 125 billion in five years, squarely for women. Indeed, William Ruto's government shall be the most feminine centric government that we have ever had. What else do you want that other than elevating one position and, and those, that and those, you're saying, uh -huh. that you're saying, let me tell you what, mm -hmm. in Azimio women are being used. You're talking about a president who has disobeyed every court order on gender parity. You're talking about a president at the end of the day who figured out, I cannot deliver uh, the vote uh, of Mount Kenya. I have constantly saying that Raila is amgangad, he has bad manners, he has no record in Mount Kenya. So let us look for a woman we use. And the truth of the fact is that the woman vote in uh, Azimio is for political expediency. And I sympathize with Mother Karoa. All right. Because she's Philip. counting a position uh, Dennis, come that the president does not respect. All right. The president has never respected his deputy. So why would Raila respect Mother Karoa at the end of the day? All right. They will no, abuse Philip, and they'll Philip. throw away. Philip, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I think uh, I really sympathize with uh, Mother Karoa in terms of uh, his party. In fact, for the whole of this month, Mother Karua has not spoken about Na Kenya. I'm really worried because... She is campaigning I, for Azimio. No, she no, has. But, but, she but has. I, I, think you I don't know seen, which candidate she I, has. I think uh, you have seen uh, Raila Odinga talk about ODM in, in Nyanza. Mm -hmm. And I think it is wise that people like Otienda Amola, I don't know whether they are in the country, even Orengo. I think they have disappeared because they have seen that this Azimio is going to lose. So, I, I, and I think they should allow Mother Karua even to campaign for an MCA. Because really, mm. well, you, can, you can't insult yeah, Mother Karua yeah. when I'm here. But I don't, Honestly speaking, I don't, yeah. no. you are not. Today, yeah, he doesn't have representation. No, 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 you can't do that. I'll candidate. give you. Yeah, uh, what is, is that an insult? No, 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 you can't do that. That's not, not I can't take that. Julia, Julia, Julia I'll, 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 give you a I'll give you a chance. Yes. Let him finish no, his line of thought. No, you can't do that. Let him finish his line of thought. I think he's not being allowed to campaign for his candidates. That's what I mean. Because really, I think Mother Karua should not be a deputy president without an MP. Without a senator, without an MCA, uh, it, it is so sad. Uh, so I think as Mother Karua is pushing the Asimio narrative, he should also work hard to bring in uh, legislators. Because at the end of the day, if you, if, if you see the way Dennis is speaking, and, and I think uh, that house will be unbalanced if they don't have the legislators. So I think 
uh, one thing that I, I, I find uh, th there's a problem, this is not the Mother Karua that I knew. Because if you see Mother Karua, he can never even be shown going to the office of Nakenya. This is very sad. Uh, to be fair to Martha Karua, because as a media, we, we cover all the candidates. Yes. She was in Thika last week meeting members of Nakenya. Just to be fair to her. Mm. Julia, go ahead. Uh, I, I think it is very wrong to actually look like we want to discuss only one person. But nevertheless, I want to confess on this national TV. Most of the women who are in uh, Kenya Kwanza, and they know themselves, and they know we know each other, we are friends. They are not women like Mother Karua. Aye. They are only men. And I can say this on this national TV. Mm -hmm. They do not actually support other women. They look for their own interest. And that is why we are saying it is really unfortunate. This country, we have reached a point whereby it's not about Mother Karua or Julia Chege in Kagema. Mm -hmm. It's about the country. It's about the country when the interests of the country must come forward. All the governors that uh, my brother here is talking about, I know they will be there, but they will be, uh, they will be like flower girls. I, know. I am very sure we are talking of uh, women who will be in... I, I, would, I would love to see Kenya being 50-50 like Rwanda. Uh -huh. We have more women uh, so that we achieve the gender parity. But what we are saying, this Kenya Kwanzaa thing, first of all, it's illegal. It does not stand for anything. My party leader, <laughs> Deb, uh, Justin Moturi, <laughs> and I'm sure he is listening to this national TV. Mm -hmm. When he went there, we had actually proposed him to be the deputy president of the, of, of the Republic of Kenya. But when he went there, something happened. And now he does not even talk about DP. I'm one of the serious candidates in Democratic Party of Kenya. And I'm telling you, we have not sat down with my party leader to discuss the way forward for Kagima. We have four candidates from Kenya Kwanzaa. What are we talking about? If for sure it's a real coalition. So what we are talking about Mother Karua and not Kenya, I have been in her meetings and this are opening remarks. We are in Azimio and Azimio has Jubilee and many other parties and friends of Azimio. And therefore Mother Karua, and, and I don't want us to discuss more about Mother Karua because you see uh, the, the truth is whether our competitors because we are not enemies. Actually, Dennis is my friend, uh -huh. and I've me met uh, Mwalim here, Philip is, uh, is my friend now. Let us agree as a country. The president will be Light Honorable Laira Odinga, and the deputy will be Mother Karua. And the truth be told, when they get into power, uh -huh. even them, they will be included. Because our camp is not about selfishness. And I can tell you, even the people who are thinking, who are in Azmio or in Kenya Kwanzaa, that if they take over power, that they are going to rule this country, they should not forget. We are there. We have people who are behind the scenes. And therefore, this country belongs to all of us. The cake is very big. And nobody can actually take it and hold it. Not anymore. So I want to assure Kenyans, we are in safe hands. We are better off. And as a woman, of course, I will not support, I'm not saying I will not support a man. But I believe this country, in a few years, we shall be having a woman president. Who knows? So, and, and Julia, do you think that is a card that Azimio is capitalizing That on? is not a card because they have 10 points that are uh -huh. We have Babakia, we have many other things they're talking about. And if we, we don't have corruption in this country, if money is not stolen, Dennis is my friend and is talking about uh, a chairman who is our president anyway, and we are losing billions. And yet, the deputy president, they're in the same government. For sure, you cannot be in the same house as a man and a woman, and uh, a spoon gets lost. You must be able to, do, to explain who actually saw it. So, we are, we are talking of money not being stolen, and the, and the 6,000 we are talking about, we shall be able to give. And I can tell you, for sure, I have a lot of faith in uh, the next government. Because these people, they have fought for this country. Uh -huh. And they have never been in the presidency. For the first time, we shall have people who have fought for this country, occupying the presidency and taking us further. Because Ju Julia, this country is not in good shape currently. Julia, quite in your response, you, yes. you make mention of money will not be lost. Yes. Are you painting 
your opponent as a team that money will be lost money has been watch. lost I'm, I'm, I'm not a media personality but every time we have seen those people on the other side they have been yeah. painted if somebody has stolen something they run to Kenya Kwanza and they say the government is actually after them it is not like that but they have not been convicted they have in a not court been of law. Uh, no you see let me tell you we are in a campaign mood and we are not and even if I was the interior minister today or, C, or CS or whatever because I mean I can be able to be that kind of a person uh -huh. I will not prosecute anybody during a campaign period because that will be used as a card against yeah, them yeah. but after this after this I can assure you Abu uh -huh. let me tell you anybody who has stolen they would rather prepare to return every public penny or get out of this country F Philip I'll, I'll come to you Dennis Philip mm. I, I, I think uh, when, when, when Uru Kenyatta says I was lenient mother is coming to jail you to jail the people mm. I think uh, I'm worried because is a country that operates under the rule of law and uh, I want to tell Kenyans if they want to prosecute anyone they will have to produce evidence you cannot win through the social media you cannot win through Facebook Twitter and the other things that people say in the streets if you want to convict even uh, the Kandhi Kashako or William Root you must produce evidence in court and I think this uh, habit of uh, people talking about corruption without evidence, I think it should come to an end. Mm -hmm. Because you really find somebody is charged, guilty, even before they go to court. Look at uh, what Sakaja went through. Sakaja now has been declared uh, free because they, they didn't have evidence. They went all the way to Uganda to stop Sakaja, but they didn't produce evidence. You only win a case in court if you have evidence. So all this uh, corruption mantra that they are using, going, in, in fact, I was really worried uh, yesterday in Eldoret, the whole day they called Ruto, Ruto a thief. Mm -hmm. Really? If all the kids, in fact, that's why I, I like the debate that was in Catholic University, because it gave Ruto an opportunity to, 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 to say and debunk all the lies that uh, people have been talking of, uh, of corruption, of land, and it was a very perfect opportunity. So I, I, I think uh, it's good for any Kenyan, if you call some, somebody corrupt, if you call somebody a thief, please produce evidence. This country is a country under the rule of law. So I, I, I think uh, going forward, and, and these, these things of corruption, by uh -huh. the way, that people say, they only say them during uh, elections. And but Philip, Philip, where is you are right, uh, Tabunet, that there is no conviction. Politics is a game of perception, isn't it? Yes. When one side is easily branded as though they are a den to people who steal public money, that perception is costly, isn't it? Yeah. In, in fact, you, re you, remember, you, re you, re you remember in the Bible uh, when this uh, lady was brought before Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. and, and Jesus said, if you are the first, you should throw the first stone. If you have never, if you have never seen, and you know, you know what happened. Uh, all the all the men left. So I, I think in this country, if someone thinks that uh, they are more holy than the other, I don't think we would even have uh, anybody to rule this country. So I, I think <laughs> going forward, we should not really charge people. Give people a chance. Give people an opportunity. Mm. Dennis. Yeah, so when uh, the president talks about corruption and um, not leaving the country to a thief, it's a case of a cat chasing its own tail. And when the president is saying that uh, he was lenient on these matters, indeed, you cannot prosecute your own relatives. Uh, you'll be um, taken as immoral. Uh, but I think it's important for the president to be courageous enough, and perhaps even before he leaves office, to prosecute the Kemsa case and uh, show Kenyans that he really means business. I know that um, my friend Julia here knows that his chairman, the chairman is culpable. I know that in her heart, just that she can't pronounce it, because she'll be thrown out of the campaigns by tomorrow. No, and the truth don't of the put matter, in my mouth, Dennis. No, <coughs> the truth no. of the matter is this. If there has been any person who history, not just history, righteousness, not just righteousness, integrity will implicate is Uhuru Kenyatta. He stands as the man who led a government in the reign that was most corrupt, more so during the second term. And that's the reason why we're talking about... Amano's deputy is William Ruto, isn't it? 
We know that uh, you remember um, the presidential decree that reorganized the government. You are a Kenyan, so you are aware of that. The fact that um, the role of, uh, of, of the deputy president is as assigned by the president. And what the president uh, maxed his duty to was uh, welcoming him in national events. And William Ruto has done that judiciously. The rest of it he gave to Raila. Uh, and, and, and the rest of it he gave to uh, his cabinet and he then uh, a few years later he complained about how bad things are mm -hmm. because he put aside the one who was working and brought in the ones who were eating. You know, William Ruto was the one who was working and he welcomed in the eaters, essentially. And, and that has been, the, you know, his own fault. Today the president stands as the most angry person in Kenya as though Kenyans don't have a right to be angry. He is angry that Kenyans are angry with him, which indeed. But he accuses uh, he accuses the DP of abandoning oh, his duties. No, when he says, and I quote, no, no, for no, no, instance, no, 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 that, let me let me quote what the president says. Some are saying that we have done this and that while being on top of vehicles. Work is not done on top of uh, cars, but in office and in theaters, ICU and wards where nurses work. When you see the president, he, he's When you see your chairman, tell him to stop being hypocritical. The fact is that. Dennis, we, I, I know, we know, we know, we know, we know that he alienated his deputy in the second term. It's public news, public knowledge. In fact, there was a presidential decree to that effect. So we don't even need to waste our time discussing that. But since we're talking about corruption, from page 58 that the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto talks about governance, page 61 talks about the most effective way to deal with endemic corruption. And that is the quasi-judicial public hearing on state capture. Why are we saying that? Because, um, uh, um, you know, the, the, the body uh, that uh, there's an NGO or an organization, the Transparency International, that has produced the best doctrines on matters of fighting corruption. And they have said all the law reforms that we have done in this country all the important anger that we have we have had in this country against mm -hmm. corruption, they have not borne any fruit. And therefore, if we don't address state capture, and what is state capture? The repurposing of power, the repurposing of finances, the repurposing of policy, the repurposing of law, to serve the interests of a few mm -hmm. has then been the problem in this country. When you look at the State Capture Commission in South Africa in 2017, it goes beyond looting. Mm -hmm. It has created a political class that are so entitled. Like the way Azimio now are. When you look at the likes of uh, some guys in Azimio, they portend themselves to have immunity that nobody can charge them. Nobody can do anything with them. You have seen that they're even calling IBC and trying to tell All them right. to compromise the election. All right. So what we want, we want <laughs> a president that we can strengthen institutions that fight graft that can arrest a sitting president and prosecute a sitting president on matters of graft. But I can tell you today, if there's any corrupt organization in the world, they are spelled as A-Z-I-M-I-O. All right. Uh, and, and, and for the context, the State Capture Commission in South Africa did indict the Gupta brothers of State Capture. Go ahead. Absolutely. Uh, 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 you, you know, when we talk about state capture, and I want to speak in a language that the common monarchy is listening to us on mm -hmm. national TV to understand. You know, what we mean is that we want to sanitize people who have stolen public money, and we want them to be governors, we want them to be presidents, we want them to be deputy presidents, so that they can continue amassing wealth and stealing from the country. And we are saying no to this uh, kind of state capture. The other issue is about uh, this issue of uh, uh, purporting that uh, Kenya Kwanza candidates are being followed left, right, center. It's unfortunate when uh, somebody, my friend uh, Sakaja, who was trying to convince the country that he has gone to school. And you know, it's rather unfortunate. And I think one of the things that we need to streamline is uh, giving a caption of what kind of leaders that we want in parliament. And in this case, we are talking of if you cannot be operated by somebody who has not gone to hospital, uh, and to work in a hospital or being trained. Why do you want the same person to actually represent you in parliament, to actually represent you in, in, in state house or wherever? So we are talking of we need to streamline. And I think Kenya, Kenya Kwanzaa needs to understand this it's because it is a fact. When you talk of uh, 
uh, the deputy president was alienated. This is a house that they built, the two of them. So he cannot say that he has been alienated. He's still the deputy president. For heaven's sake, let us not write to Kenyans. Let us not write to Kenyans because he is still the deputy president. That is what we know. Whether there are fights, there, we do not want to get into that. But the fact is, I am not the deputy president. Dennis, you are not. Philip, you are not. He is the one. So we must be able to tell Kenyans the truth. And you know, our deputy president, it's a man that I admired because of his wit in terms of politics. But then when he, was, he started being implicated with Kim Warel, Siju, what, things, very many things, that one now brought a lot of jitters to some of us. You know, and that is why I'm saying the Azimio should not be crucified by anybody because these are people who have come together, the ideologies that they have brought together, they want to save this country. And you know, our campaigns are very costly. I am in the campaign trail and I'm competing with seven men. And I can tell you, when we go to the ground and we talk about the things that we have done, then they have nothing they are talking about is dishing of the money. You know? So what I want to tell our, 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 our viewers and the Republic of Kenya, we must construct politics because we have made politics a money business. And if, uh, if somebody thinks uh, maybe, Abu, you want to vie for a member of parliament somewhere, they think you are a billionaire. Uh -huh. And any time you talk to them, eh, uh, give us something small. So they, we, we need to actually bring this country into some sanity. Broke, the He's not broke, I know. But uh, what I'm saying, <laughs> nobody is broke here anyway. That is why we are here. Admit nor deny that. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, but what you are saying, <laughs> let us not joke about the Kenyan issues in, in terms of politics. Right. Yes. Ria, because of the interest of time. Yes. When there is a question of alienation. Yes. When there is an executive order number one of 2020, very public, mm -hmm. transferring some of the functions to CS Matiani. Mm -hmm. Does Deputy President William Ruto have a justification to say that his functions have been transferred? You see, if you're in a, if you are, if you misbehave and you're in a house, mm -hmm. you <laughs> can be thrown out. Allah. He is even very fortunate uh, uh, because he has not been thrown away. Hmm. I think when he started campaigning, another campaign, and you know, purporting that he's looking for uh, the, the, the highest uh, p uh, position in the country, and he, he, he stopped development and he went into politics immediately. You know, I, 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 I think Deputy President should be very uh, happy with uh, his, his Excellency because if it was other people, <laughs> for sure, I, I, I actually salute His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, because he has actually accommodated somebody who has gone even to his bedroom to campaign and say all manner of things, uh, no. lies and everything. <laughs> he has been in Kiabu. Have you seen Uhuru Kenyatta in... Uh, in Sugoi, you have not. No. You know, so what we are, we are talking about, we are, we are saying on this national TV, let us be truthful to our country. This is a time, is a time moment that we must change everybody. Actually, I want to speak to even my competitors and everybody else who is vying for any uh, parliamentary position or governor or whatever. Kenyans are more wise. And they are telling us, wakati wakukula umeisha, ni wakati wakupiga kula. So, I am telling you, the money is that those people they have stolen and they have given them, now they will, say, they will actually going, they are going to vote wise. And you know I'm a candidate in Kagema and I'm number one on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they, they shall give me the votes and I'm, I'm going to get there. All right, uh, Philip, yes. because of the interest of time, pass your, your closing remarks. <laughs> uh, I would like to tell Kenyans, uh, oh, everything that we have worked for, everything that we have been waiting on Tuesday next week, all these lies, mm -hmm. propaganda, uh, all this embarrassment that even the deputy president has had for a very long time will come to an end. And, and I think I want to tell uh, the people of Kenya that if you love the candidate that you want, please come out and vote. Mm -hmm. Because this election will be decided by voter turnout. And I think uh, you, you have seen uh, some people uh, are really, uh, really, really praying hard that there will be a low voter turnout, even in some regions, so that they win. But I want to say that right now you should be checking 
what you need to use in order to vote. And we shall be there 5 a.m. in the morning mm. to ensure that for us down there in, in, in Wasingishu, you know, that will be the region where uh, Abdullahi, if you want to, <laughs> to, 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 to come and visit uh, the Kabarak of, uh, of Kenya, will be, will be, will be, will be, will be Eldoret. So we would like to we welcome all the visitors and we would like to tell the people in, in, in Eldoret and the other parts of Kenya that if you love William Ruto, please come out and vote. Mm. This thing of talking in the streets, talking uh, about the candidates without going to vote, you are helping nothing. Uh, Dennis? Uh, first of all, very unfortunate comments from my, my friend uh, Kangema uh, Aspirant. Uh, William Ruto is a son of this country. He's free to go by anywhere. The president does not have a bedroom. His bedroom is in his house. Uh, Gatondo belongs to everything. I talked of political. Uh, and the truth is that um, mm -hmm. William Ruto has a freedom uh, enshrined in the constitution mm -hmm. by birth to even become uh, the leader of any region. And indeed, he is our leader when it comes to Mount Kenya, all the 10 counties. We want to say that we submit to his presidency. We will love his presidency. We will thrive in his presidency at the end of the day. Uh, there's just that dynastic feeling that, that uh, the president holds the presidency. It is no private property. Neither can we talk about succession. We talk about transition. Stay there for five years, go home. Campaign again for five years, maximum is 10 years, go home. And that's the reason why they wanted to disabolish that through BBI and bring, uh, you know, an eternal presidency because they're used to ruling. And that's what we want to get rid of when it comes to August 10th. The truth of the fact is that <clears throat> the William Ruto presidency is inevitable. From where we sit, William Ruto uh, is leading in this contest by a margin that is plus 60%. And we know for sure that the reason why Azimio is behaving frantic, we know the reason why Azimio is behaving like though they have malaria, is because this election has already been won, because the hustlers want to establish and gain back their nation as a nation that they have a birthright. Uh -huh. Even if your father's name is not known, you're respected. We need to return respect back to the people. We need to return decency back to the presidents, to, to, the, to, the, to the presidency and the cabinet. We don't want crybabies in government. We don't want it to look like uh, the presidency is a baby court where somebody just, you cry day in and day out. The truth is that we have to return decency and decorum in this country where the respect of every man is, uh, is, is enshrined in the constitution, where the respect of every woman is enshrined in this constitution. And I want to say, remember Inua Mama was a project by Kenya Kwanzaa women, They're led by Alice Wahome. We respect women in this country. We respect children. All right. We respect the youth. The place that you will get that liberation, the socioeconomic liberation enshrined in Article 43 of the Constitution, where you will get proper men that uh, share the threshold of Chapter 6, where you will be respected and there will be national mannerisms, Article 10 of the Constitution. Is, is, uh, is in Kenya Kwanzaa. We Fair are enough. telling them, to the last man, mm -hmm. come out and vote for the presidency of William Samoy Ruto, the new dawn in this country. Let us get rid of Madarao and bad numbers and poverty. All right. Uh, Julia, your closing uh, remarks. Uh, first of all, I would like to urge every Kenyan to actually vote on the 9th of August. Because if you do not vote, you give power to the person who you do not want. Right. Now, the other thing uh, is that we must vote peace. We must vote peace, and we know the people who have caused mayhem in this country. And we do not want to go back into the Kiaba and many other issues, because it is on public domain and public news. So we want to tell Kenyans they must vote peace. And once you vote, just go home and wait for the results. And now, what uh, I, I want to urge my competitors, the Kenya Kwanzaa team, because you know, we are brothers and sisters. It's only, it's only that, uh, you know, I have uh, freedom to be where I want to be. And I support uh, Mother Karua. I support, uh, uh, you know, like now you have just said it's Mother Rao. And you know, that is already, you're already purporting to be not be disrespectful. Okay. You need to, uh, to respect. Uh -huh. And that's why I'm asking Kenyans today. We are in a moment, in a defining moment, whereby we must come out and vote. And I'm urging everybody to come out and vote for the candidature of Laira Amoro Odinga and Mother Karua. 
because that is those are the people who are going to liberate this country and i have no apology whatsoever to make because that is my democratic right and you cannot be able to you cannot be labeled that you're in this by the way abu on 10th we shall all be kenyans right now we are kenya kwanza we are what we are azimio but on 10th we shall all be kenyans so i want to urge everybody we come out and uh, and actually vote and finally you know gashagwa ride to the media and to kenyans that they had no differences we all know what happened when he was being uh, named we all know what happened to professor kidiki and we don't want to unmask all these things here yeah? uh -huh. so he said that, of course there were those differences mother karua before the debate he said she said that we can have differences, but we not bring them into the public, like what Gashagwa said. Gashagwa has been seen many other times. You know, he has been seen doing all manner of things. Where has Mother Karwe and Laida been seen doing all those kind of things? So we must respect that. And I urge Kenyans, vote for Azimio. And let's vote for individuals because we know where this country is headed. Because of the interest of time, we will finish the show there. But because you are the only candidate in this panel, you know, uh, why should the people of Kangema vote for you? Number one, as their member of parliament. Uh, number one, among the seven contestants, I'm the most educated. We are talking of people who are there who are 34 dropouts. We are talking of people with a D minus as candidates. And one of the things I want to tell the people of Kagema, we cannot elect bad leadership. We cannot elect people who cannot be able to articulate issues in parliament. So number one, I'll look at, uh, into their education. Number two, security. And I'm a well uh, uh, enlightened person. I'll be able to represent them in parliament. And lastly, the economic recovery. I have a, a project called Dry Rat Arut, whereby we plant our roots and we are able to give uh, to Gedurai and all that, and we will be able to do value addition. And therefore, the people of Kagema, I'm urging them tonight. Remember, I'm the only woman on the ballot. And number one, please consider, and I've been there, we've been talking with them, and I'm telling you, we have decided. The country is shifting. Kagema has shifted, and I'm sure the people of Kagema, next time I'm coming on TV47, I'll be coming to thank them. And we wish you the very best of luck. Just Thank for you. purpose of curiosity, when you say they are from, from class 4 dropouts, yes. you mean they have not met the IBC and question? No, you see, the, uh, the, the issue of IBC, we don't have, uh, t it's only the governors who are asked to bring the certificate. No wonder we have people who are uh, learning health skelter, trying to prove they've been to school. So uh, if you produce a Saturday uh, certificate or right. something, and some have faked them, so I want to remind the people of Kagema, we are not going to sell Kagema 50 shillings, the one that uh, other candidates are giving, or 100 shillings. We are going to elect people who can represent us, people who have the interest <laughs> of Kagema at heart. Uh, well, Julia Chege is a governance expert and Kangema parliamentary candidate, a lecturer at the University of yes. Nairobi. Uh, Philip Chebunet is a lecturer at the University of Eldoret. Uh, Dennis Ndumbi is a political analyst and a frequent commentator on politics as well. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you so much, Abu. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's edition of Pandit's Night. I am Abu Bakr Abdullahi on behalf of the entire team that made this production possible. Bye for now. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Tonight of all night, good night, and above all, God bless. We value your feedback. If you would like to send questions, comments, or suggestions for your favorite TV47 shows, call us on telephone number 0740 